right guys, I got a good one here for you today. We got a old one, but good one. This is what we're gonna do. Some of you may remember that from uh, the outros of Kasim's Awkward Moments or California Ons a while back. All right, let's get started. We'll create a new composition. Okay. Let's do a little walkthrough of what we got going on here. In this comp here, we have a blue background and everything's in 3D space. First, we're gonna build our sky element, which consists of a dark blue background followed by a vignette. And then using particular, we will create the stars that are in three-dimensional space. Then we got some text and cut out images here, all separated in 3D space. And then I'll show you how to create a camera and fly through that 3D space. Let's begin. All right, let's create a new solid, layer new. Solid. And this is going to be our sky. So we want a dark blue, something around this nature here. Make comp size. And let's label this sky. Okay. If we look at the other one, we've got a vignette going on here around the edges. Easiest way to do that is layer, new, solid. We'll make this one a little bit lighter. Okay. Make comp size. Okay. And we'll take our ellipse tool and double click it. Come down here to our mask and invert it. You can hit F and your mask feather will come up. Just feather it out. T for opacity. Bring it down to about 40, 45 looks good. You could take the sky here and even go into your solid settings and make it even darker. You know, it's night. There you go. It's looking a little bit better. We're going to come over here and next thing we're going to build our stars or our particles. Another new solid. This time make it black. Okay. Come over here to our effects. P-A-R-T. You can really do it with either one of these. You got CC Particle World or Trap Codes Particular. Trap Codes Particular is a little bit more complex. You can do a little bit more with it. For the sake of the users out there, I will just use CC Particle World for now. Let's turn the floor off. Birth rate will bring down. Our longevity will bring all the way up. Our producer, we will spread out bring our birth rate up here so we can at least see what we're doing here and spread these out spread these up spread them in Z space we're gonna want to spread these out really far because our camera is moving around a pretty good amount keep in mind the more your camera moves the more you want these spread out now for our physics here for our longevity we're gonna bring the gravity to zero resistance zero velocity be good at point six particle star all right we're getting somewhere now this is your birth to death color no stars are that yellow they're almost even a whiter maybe even bluish birth size bring that down death size bring that down you could even bring your birth rate up here your star life up next we're going to add a glow effect stylize glow That'll just make these a little bit more vibrant. Maybe turn the intensity up, mess with the glow radius here. Let's see what we got going. That's a little bit too many. We want our life to be longer, birth rate to be less. We don't want them coming at us. Turn this down to zero. Okay, now they're just twinkling in space. If we can even turn our longevity up, up even further. Birth rate, turn it down. Let's try point 0.1. So this is kind of cartoony, I know. It's kind of the idea with this. Next, we'll bring in a image of full moon. Size, bring the size down on this guy. Composite the moon by toggling your switches, hitting screen. You're gonna put the sky in 3D space by clicking the box. The moon in 3D space. Let's get everything in order here. This is our vignette. That can come down out of the way. If you just hit enter, it makes it easy to rename these moon stars. We put our moon way back in Z space. Hold shift, get it way back there. Bring it over off to the side here. Now hit S and we'll scale it up. All right, so we're getting there now. Next, grab our little coyote or wolf, I guess. Throw him in front of the moon here. Scale him up, take our pen tool and trace around our wolf. 
I'm just gonna do this quickly. You'd put more time into it, obviously, which you should. Now we have our wolf. Wolf. Put him in 3D space as well. Let's fit this here. Bring our wolf down in our corner here. Layer, new camera, 35 millimeter, okay. That puts our moon a little bit further back in Z space there. That's fine is where it's at right there. If we want the moon to be bigger, we can always you know, bring it up in Z space, bring it overhead of the wolf maybe a little bit more. So that way it looks like he's howling into it or something like that. Layer, new, no object. And we're going to make that a 3D layer. Take the camera, parent it to this null. When we hit P on this null here, and let's mark our first position. And your vignette, you don't want that to be 3D. Now we're ready to keyframe. We want this to come back at, oh, let's say two seconds. Let's mark this keyframe here at two seconds. Then we'll come over to the left. So our first camera motion pulls into the wolf. It's going to rest for a second keyframe, rush forward in Z space. Let's push our sky back here further. And let's let's ease these keyframes so they have a nice fluid motion going in and out. Keyframe assistant, easy ease. And then at this point, we have a camera pivot. Before that camera pivot, let's change our moon up here a little bit. Let's put our moon on a slight angle. That way when we have this camera orbit, our moon doesn't appear flat from the side. It's good right about there straight on. Just enough of an angle that it doesn't look awkward from the starting position. Let's go over to four seconds, select the camera, click position. I'm gonna follow these reference frames that I set for my null object. Go up top and grab the camera orbit tool. Set my orbit. So now I have my one second orbit. All right, let's go back to the beginning here and start adding text. We're gonna to go to our second keyframe here where our first position is stopping and settling. New videos. We'll go to effect perspective drop shadow. Just mess with these settings until you find something that you like. You know, you can do a lot of different things here. I added a texture in the original comp behind it to kind of give it some depth. We'll go to our next keyframe where we're gonna insert text. Type in every week. You can simply just copy and paste the drop shadow from the first text by selecting the text, highlighting drop shadow, select edit, copy, and then select your other text and just hit edit, paste. So that way we can be sure that the drop shadows will be exactly the same. It's just a simple quick way to do that. Then once you turn on the 3D layer, it's gonna kind of jump out of place here. So we'll zoom out, find that, bring it back into place here. Select fit. We'll move every week over here to the right, get it in position, rotate it, move it in Z space, just kind of get it where you want it. And we'll check here to make sure it clears on the turn. Okay, let's move it back a little further, it's not clearing. And increase the size, hit S. We'll move it over to the right a little more. And just try and get it right, so that way when we make that turn, it stays clear. There we go. Okay, let's go back to our position. Pause for a bit. Set a new keyframe. Select the null object and raise it up along the Y axis. We're gonna run out of sky here for a little bit, but that's okay. We can just increase the size on that. Find a good spot and select your keyframes for the camera layer. We're gonna do a camera orbit again for a final move. So select the camera orbit tool once again and we'll rotate and let's extend this out let's do one sweeping move to finish we're going to duplicate our text by hitting command D trim it up here let me trim both layers up so we're not catching it as the camera's moving around punch out, find it Bring it into frame and position it. Let's 
rotate it on the y-axis, select fit, and we'll change our text here to from cast, uh, actually no, 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 from station tutorials, there we go. New videos every week from Station Tutorials. All right, and just position it where you want it. And then you can fly through your animation. And I kind of want to pass this here. So what I'm going to do is select my camera orbit tool again on this final keyframe and just sweep past it completely. Now you may notice I'm running out of stars here. I'll go back to my particle layer and separate the X radius, the Y radius, and the Z radius. And spread these out a little bit more. There we go. All right, we're nearly done. You can also turn on the motion blur here and then turn on the motion blur for the comp. And that'll give it a more realistic feel as it's blurring past or speeding past. You can also turn it on for the wolf and the moon. The moon's really not going to do much because it's back so far in Z-space. It's such a large object. So that's how I did that. Show me, uh, show me what you guys have done. If you've done something similar to this, you know, leave a video response and uh, I'll watch it. Now that you guys know the basics of camera movements in 3D space, you know, go out and use it for something. Use it for a cool intro, outro, whatever. All right, I'm Blake O'Neill, and this has been Station Tutorials. See you guys next week.